that was fun, to be honest. Uh, it was uh, tough. Uh, we knew it would be. Uh, the number one thing we talked about as we were preparing for this game is playing against a team that plays with everything they've got, 40 minutes. Uh, they've got a lot of skill, uh, but they play as hard as anyone. Uh, you're not going to find a team that plays harder than that. And uh, we knew for that reason that if we didn't match the physicality, that they would be the aggressive team. And so that was the challenge going into the game. Uh, we have one game going into it under our belt. And so we're learning. Uh, we got a lot of new people in a lot of new places. And so we're forming our identity as a team at minute by minute. And so being challenged like that, there's no way to recreate that in practice. Um, that's what the preseason's for. And so we, we got two preseason games. Um, this was a big test for us. And I was really pleased with the way the team responded as the game went on and, uh, and found a way to grind it out. And I was really impressed by San Francisco and how gritty and tough they were, how well coached they are, and clearly how well they shot the ball. I mean, that was a great performance. And so just a really good basketball game. Hey, Scott, you talked about forming identity. Sasha Goforth really kind of formed one today in that fourth quarter. I think you guys were up three, and she hits a free throw, then scores like 10 more in a row, and really kind of helped you guys over. What did you – well, first, how fun was it to see her kind of come out like that? And then what did you like the most about how she kind of took control right then? Everything, everything. Um, and, you know, that's uh, – it's fun to watch that because we see it every day. Uh, that's just the way she plays. You know, she's extremely aggressive – um, I thought Savannah was extremely aggressive off the bench as well, um, late in the first quarter or early in the second, uh, attacking right away. And so uh, Teresa played very well. So our first year players today played extremely well uh, in their first Division I game. And I, you know, in going back to Sasha, uh, she can she can score from the perimeter. She can take it to the rim. We knew that we had an advantage in her matchup just because of her speed and athleticism. And I thought she really put a lot of pressure on them all day long on both ends of the floor. Uh, tipped a lot of basketballs, created a lot of chaos for them at the other end. And then, you know, just defensively got better and better as she's getting used to this level. And so that was a great performance for us today. And <clears throat> for those of us who get to be in the gym with her every day, no surprise. Hi, Scott. Long time no see. Nice um, to see you. Nice to see you as well. Watching Aaliyah and Sasha and the, the minutes they were there out on the floor together, the games look very similar between the two of them. How, how do they kind of complement one another out there? Um, well, I think they play very well. They're both uh, skilled. They're both sitting in front of me looking at me right now smiling. Um, and so they are very similar in the fact that they, I mean, they're both just weapons offensively. Uh, they both have the ability to pass the ball, attack the rim, and shoot the three over the top. You know, uh, Sasha's a little bit longer. aliyah has got a little more experience and uh, has played more of the point position. And so, you know, they are a really nice complement. Um, defensively, they, they both understand the game, and they're both cerebral defenders. Uh, and that, that's what I, I value about their game on that end of the floor. So, yeah, you're right. I, that's uh, going to be fun for everybody to watch this year as these two uh, play off each other so well. Looked like in the second half there, you were relying on Taylor a lot more in the front court, uh, just as far as minutes and rotations go with Kennedy out, you know, for the time she's going to be, how, how important is that for you guys to kind of really define what that front court is going to look like and how those minutes are going to be divvied up? I think it's night by night. Um, I think it's situation by situation. Yelena gives us so many good things as well. Um, you know, tonight was her first Division One game as well. Uh, you know, and so for Yelena to adjust to the speed of the game, the physicality of the game, I mean, this team was smaller, um, you know, quicker, uh, and they defended low and around her knees, you know? <laughs> I mean, and so that's that's sometimes a tough matchup for for a, a tall post. And And so I thought, you know, what she's capable of doing, I mean, she's so skilled that that gives us a nice compliment to Taylor. And then Yovana can also slide to the five and play there. And so we've got three, you know, that um, provide three completely different looks at the five position, which is going to be very valuable going forward. Tonight, um, you know, I, I would have liked to see us get the ball to Taylor a little more in the first half. I thought that was one of our issues in the first half offensively was we couldn't establish an inside game and you've got to give them credit for that. 
but it's also, like I said, our first division one game against another opponent. And so it's one of those things that we'll get better and better at. And you saw that improvement, you know, as the game went on and it just seemed right in this game to keep that group out there and let them grow together, knowing that this is our last game before PAC 12 play starts. If you shift Yovana to the five there, I mean, do you have kind of like a five out, option with a bunch of shooters in, in that case? Because it seemed like there was periods there, third, early, fourth, where, you know, you look like, you know, four shooters and Taylor kind of out there. Right? That's a good problem. And um, putting Yo out there and letting her shoot over the top and going uh, with five perimeter players and five threats is also a good problem, uh, you know, for, for us to create for other people. I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. And so, yeah, I'm not going to give you our entire game plan going forward. But um, this team is very versatile, and I've talked about that a lot. Hey, Leah. Hi. How, uh, how important was it for you guys to have this game today? I know you had one canceled, but just to get another one in before you start conference play on Sunday? Yeah, um, I think it was really important. Obviously, going into Pac-12, going into conference play, it's, um, you want as many games as you can get. And obviously, that was a little difficult this year. So our coaching staff worked really hard. Um, to get this game. San Francisco worked really hard as well to make this game happen. Um, so yeah, having another game under our belt is awesome. It, I mean, it was a great game. It was a fun game. It was, it was a great game leading into conference play for sure. Uh, Sharon, the backcourt some with Sasha there. I thought she really kind of gave you that spark you needed in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think it was a three point game and she scored 11 straight for you guys. It did it in a bunch of ways, getting to the, you know, basket and scoring threes, getting to the free throw line, playing defense. Just how much has she kind of progressed through these first couple of games and she's going to be thrown into the fire here in a couple of days? Yeah, I mean, she's done awesome. Like Coach Rook said, um, we've seen it every day in practice. Uh, trust me, I've had to guard it a few days in practice. It's it's not, it's tough. Um, but no, Sasha's done great. She's a great option for us. Um, she can get to the basket, get to the free throw line plenty of times. Um, and then obviously, shoot the ball really extremely well. Um, so having her next to me, play, being able to play with her has been a lot of fun. And then like Coach Rook mentioned, just her defensive presence is huge. I don't even think you realize how long she is. Um, but yeah, she gets tips, deflections on all types of balls. So Defensively, did you guys kind of foresee USF coming in and shooting, you know, 35 or whatever number it was threes, or is that just something that kind of, you know, came about as the game started progressing? No, uh, it was definitely the game plan to take away the three point line. Uh, it might not have looked, looked like that at times, but no, we knew they were a great shooting team. Um, they're tough to guard, man. They are flare screens, on ball screens constantly. So yeah, they're they're a great team, great offense. Um, so yeah, they're tough to guard, but we knew we knew coming in they were they were hot shooters for sure. How much in these early games is communication defensively, you know, important? Just talking right position, kind of getting that chemistry right for when conference starts. Yeah, uh, communication is huge. Obviously, it's hard to go through game situations during practice. I mean, we try our best, but nothing is is exactly the game. Um, so yeah, communication is really important, making sure everyone's on the same page, making sure we know where shooters are at, are at all times um, is something that's obviously extremely important. So yeah, communication is, is a very big part of our defense. For you, how, is, how have these last couple games just kind of been, you know, you want from last year where you've got two pretty ball heavy guards there in, in, in Mick and destiny. And now you're one of the primary ball handlers of, of this offense, even more so um, than last year. H how has it been just kind of that, that transition of running the offense a bit more? Yeah. I mean, it's been fairly easy. Uh, I've played point guard my whole life, so it's nothing new. And then I'm surrounded by great guards as well. Um, everyone can bring up the ball. Everyone's a point guard on this team, which is extremely nice. So I don't feel like I have a bunch of pressure because I know I can swing it over to anyone else and they can run the offense just as easily. These first two games uh, at halftime, you guys came out a lot stronger, more consistent. What's been the message at half um, from Scott and just the players to spark that fire going into the last two periods? Yeah, I think just going into halftime, um, we weren't happy with ourselves. The, both, both last two games, uh, 
we weren't happy with our performance, how we came out, how we started. So going into halftime, that was just kind of the message is like, hey, it's time to, st- time to play Oregon State basketball. Um, we knew we were better than how we played or how we performed. Um, so just kind of getting back to our game, uh, doing what we do well um, has kind of been the message and just staying poised, staying relaxed and just playing Oregon State basketball. All right, questions for Sasha? Hey, Sasha, congrats on, on a, a great performance today. Talk me through a little bit in that fourth quarter. I think you had 11 straight points for your team, and you did it in a bunch of ways. Did you even know that was happening, or how did – just kind of tell me a little bit about that experience during the fourth quarter get you guys up double figures. Uh, no, I wasn't really aware, but it was kind of just a whole team thing. Um, we were all supposed to be aggressive, and – I noticed that my speed was a little bit ahead of the girl guarding me. So I just kind of took advantage of it. And then my teammates put me in great positions for the two threes also. So, How much more comfortable are you now after a couple of games under your belt heading into Pac-12 play on Sunday? Uh, it's definitely a little nerve wracking for me at first. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but I, I feel really comfortable with our team. Um, we're all seriously like best friends. So that like helps on the court. And I just feel like we have great chemistry together. So yeah, it feels good. What's it been like just um, getting to know Aaliyah, uh, you know, getting to know her game. I know you were sitting there when Scott answered the question about you both. So, um, you know, what is it about her game that you can play off of well? Um, It's honestly really inspiring. I've never had a leader that's so, that just like wants it so bad. Like she literally has a killer mindset. And whenever she's thinking like that, everybody else feeds off of it. Like she's the reason we turned it around. Like she got that in our heads. And I really can't tell you like how big of a difference that makes to have someone that's older than you. And she has helped me immensely personally. Like my nerves and then if I'm doing bad or just teaching me like teaching me specifically she's done a lot what what's been the biggest I guess learning curve in the first few games here for you um I would just say the speed and detail like you you have to do every little thing perfectly or they're gonna get a shot like At this level, it's just, it's, it's very high level. So you just got to do what you're supposed to do unless, or they'll get a shot. (laughs) 